So I think you guys will really enjoy this class. Um, we're talking about medical vocabulary and um, voca vocabulary that you would use on a doctor's visit. Uh, you guys are going to also practice role playing so you, you can give a diagnosis as a doctor uh, to your, your patients, which will be the other students. So we can get started with this vocabulary. Um, this is kind of basic just to cover the whole human body so that so, um, Mimekinas Ksenia, can you read uh, the little introduction here? Yes. Uh, one of the first things you need to know when working in English in the parts of the body. You will need to learn the names of the internal inside the skin and external body parts. You will also need to learn the words for the functions to each of these body parts. Here are the basics to get you started. I'm going to ask Bakri to read um, under the subheading head. Okay. Um, inside the head is a brain which is responsible for thinking. The top person's scalp is covered with hair. Beneath the hairline at the bottom of the face is a forehead. Underneath the Underneath uh, the forehead are the eyes for seeing, the nose for smelling, the mouth for eating. On the outside of the mouth are the lips, and on the inside of the mouth are the teeth for hitting and for biting, and the tongue for uh, tasting. Food is swallowed down the throat. At the sides of the face are the cheeks and at the sides of the head are the ears for hearing. At the bottom of a person's face is the chin. The jaw is located on the inside of the cheeks and chin. The neck is what attached the head to the upper part. All right, nice. And is everyone familiar with all of these words like jaw, scalp, forehead? Have you guys heard of these? Yes. Okay, okay. Jose, are you pretty familiar with all of these words? Do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Well, some of them are familiar to me, uh, other ones no. <laughs> okay, do you have questions about any of them? No, no. All right, all right, okay. Uh, Bakri, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay, all right. So, Jose, I'm going to ask you to read under the subheading upper body. Okay, upper body. At the top and front of the upper body, just below the neck, is the coya bone. On the front side of the upper body is the chest, which in women includes the breasts. Babies suck on the nipples on their mother's breasts. When at the right cage are the stomach and the waist. The navel, more commonly referred to as the belly button, is located here as well. On the inside of the upper body are the hearth for pumping blood and the lungs for breathing. The rear side of the upper body is called the back, inside which the spine connects the upper body to the lower body. Very good. Great job. And this collarbone, um, it has these two L's, which I know in Spanish it's pronounced kind of like a Y. But yeah, we pronounce it like collar, collarbone. Collar. Collarbone. And yes. do you know where the collarbone is? Uh, I can maybe show you here. I'll show you with my video. It's this bone right here. This is your collarbone. Yes. Okay. So so it runs from your shoulder to the middle of like the bottom of your okay. throat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this is your <laughs> collarbone. Um, yeah, the, sorry, Becky. It's clavicle bone. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Oop. And I'll share my screen with you one more time. Hold on, I accidentally minimized it. Okay, so we had the upper body there. Do you guys have questions about any of these words with the upper body? Nope. All right, we have the upper limbs too. And Akka joined us. Welcome, Akka. Yes, hello. Hello, welcome back. Yes. Thank you. Aku, would you like to read about the upper limbs? Okay, upper limbs, arms. The arms are attached to the shoulders. Beneath this area is called the 
the armpit or underarm. The, the upper arms have the muscles known as a tri uh, triceps and biceps. The joint halfway down the arm is called the elbow. Between the elbow and the next joint, the wrist, is the forearm. Below the wrist is the hand with our fingers and one thumb. Uh, uh, with four fingers and one thumb. Beside the thumb is the index finger. Beside the index finger is the middle finger, followed by the ring finger and the little finger. At the end of the fingers are uh, fingernails. Great job. Okay. Have you heard of all of these words before? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, so you know biceps, uh, but, uh, I don't know. biceps. Yeah, yeah. Triceps, biceps, I, I, I don't know. Okay, okay. So, well, maybe we can, your biceps, you know, you can see them in this picture here. These are your biceps. Um, and I'll show you a picture of triceps, maybe. Okay, so um, your biceps, you see, are on the front of your arm, kind of, like in this picture. In the front of your arm, like when you make a muscle, you can see your biceps. But then your triceps are the, it's the muscle, but it's like on the back part of your arm. So it would be like this muscle here on the back. Okay? So these are biceps and those are triceps. <laughs> All right, so let's look now at the lower body. And Ksenia, can I ask you to read about the lower body? <clears throat> Below the waist on left and right are the hips. Between the hips are the reproductive organs, the penis male and vagina female, and the back of the lower body are the buttocks for sitting on. They are also commonly referred to as the rear end of the bum, especially with children. The internal org organs in the lower body include their intestines, intestines? It, intestines for digesting food and bladder for holding liquid waste, as well as the liver and the kidneys. This area also contains the woman uterus, which holds a baby when a woman is pregnant. Lower limbs? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Read that too. Go ahead. Lower limbs, legs. The top of the leg is called the thigh, and the joint in the middle of the leg is the knee. The front of the lower leg is a shin, and the back of the lower leg is a calf. The ankle connects their foot to the leg. Each foot has five toes. The smallest toe is often called the little toe, while the large one is called the big one, the big toe. At the end of the tours are toenails. Very good, excellent. So, um, so yeah, this is the thigh on um, like this part between your hip and your knee. It's called the thigh, and then the calf is the muscle behind your leg. The shin is like the hard part in the front of of your lower leg. That's kind of like where the bone is, the shin. Okay, so I think we have a pretty good understanding. Did you guys have any questions about the the um, anatomy vocabulary? I don't know their world. I had difficulties with instar, something Intestine. like that. Intestine. Yes, it's uh, the tubes, like yes, a long yeah, tubes. Exactly. Yeah, we have a large intestine and a small intestine, and hopefully we can find some pictures without them being too. Gross. <laughs> and the gut, the same. What? Gut, guts. The guts, yeah. Sometimes it's called your gut. Mm -hmm. it, it's the intestine. Um, so, yeah, you can see a picture here. So, the small intestine and the large intestine. Okay. So yeah, thanks for that question. Very good. So let's take a little quiz. We can see if we um, have a pretty good understanding of our vocabulary here. And maybe we can ask Aka to try number one. Okay. Uh, your uh, tonsils can get swollen when you have a sore something. Okay, so there are four options. Mm -hmm. Thigh, toe, 
throat or lips? Uh, uh, throat, throat is a common word, but I don't know tonsil, so throat, 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 I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, very good. And your tonsils are, are located um, kind of like in the back of your throat. Okay. Um, yeah, so when they're swollen, then you have a sore throat. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. <laughs> good job. Michelle, I have a question also. Yeah, in, in Russia, it's common to cut this tonsil from the children. And in America, the same? Um, yeah, it used to be. Um, I, I don't think it's too it depends, common anymore. It depends, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah it depends in the on past. The yeah. I mean, it, it depends on how severe it is, like, if there's any indication. Okay. Yeah, maybe if, if they have, like, a recurring infection, then maybe they would, like, if it kept um, becoming infected over and over again then they might remove their tonsils. But, but yeah, nice question. That's interesting that they remove them also in Russia. Okay, and Jose, can I ask you to try number yes. two? Yes. The elbow is located in the middle of the arm. Okay, that's true. Very good. <laughs> Great job. Uh, Bakri, can you try number three? Uh, my dad's little finger or toe was lost in the accident. Okay, yeah, the, the options are thumb, toe, wrist, or armpit. A little toe. Little toe, okay, I think that that's correct also. Very good. Nice job. All right, Kiseni, can you try number four? Uh, the patient lost so much weight, his belly was sunken in, stomach. Um. Yeah, that's a good guess. Okay, so the options are calves, thigh, muscle, or cheeks. Maybe cheeks. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what cheeks are? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's like on your face. Yes. So, yeah, normally they're like a little bit um, obtuse, yes, so like they, they stick out a little bit, but yeah, if you're very skinny, then they go in. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vakri, can you try number five? Uh, we will put a cool cloth on your, get your fever down on your forehead. Okay. Yeah, on your forehead. Very good. So, yeah, the options were knees, tongue, teeth, or forehead. So, very good. That's It's something that our mother always did, too, at our house. She would put a cloth in the freezer and then we, she put it on our head. We had a fever. I saw we had Nan join us too. Hey, Nan. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, Nan, where are you from? I'm from China. Cool. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so um, we were answering some questions about our vocabulary, and um, I think it's Jose's turn. Jose, can you turn in Yes. Six? Another word for um, Billy Buto Bottom is uh, piercing or something like that? No? Uh, no, a piercing is like when you put a hole through something. But okay. we have four options. Yes. E, navel, chest, or stomach. I don't know. Stomach? No. Um, that's close. It's, it's, okay, I'll read the other ones to you. It's not stomach, so it's either knee, navel, or chest. Mm -hmm. Knee? No. Navel. Maybe navel. It's navel, me. navel. Yeah, yeah it's true. Navel. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes it's called your navel. Very good. And, I'm um, like a I saw we had Hogan join us too. Welcome, Hogan. Hi, how are you? I'm, how you I'm doing sorry, I'm well? a little late. No problem. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> okay, Aka, can I ask you to try the next one? Okay, uh, the newborn is getting his uh, blank changed in the nursery. Okay, so we have his. thigh, bum, chin, or heart. Mm, a 
Could you see the option? No, it, it doesn't it show the like option? on the screen. Well, maybe I can do okay. this. Thigh, mm -hmm. bum, mm -hmm. shin, shin, or heart. Ah, I'm not familiar with Usually, this, this is. I mm -hmm. think this is how they might see it in uh, the UK in England. Mm -hmm. I think this is how they say it there. Uh, I, I I don't know. What do they usually change on a baby? When it gets uh, <laughs> changed? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. Changed in the nursery. Well, usually I think they change their diaper. Usually. Ah, okay, nappy. But yeah. Ah, um, the bum. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> I think they use this word bum in the, in the ah, UK in England. I see. Okay. So, um, yeah, usually we would say a newborn is getting his diaper changed in the United okay. States. That's how we say it. But I think this is a British website, so that's why they have a bum. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Maybe I can ask Nan to try number eight. Okay. Uh, she may never walk again because her uh, uncle um, mm -hmm. Okay. Was so, badly was so badly injured. Yeah, okay, so there are four options. Ankle is not an option, but if it was, that would be a great choice. But instead, we have uterus, spine, finger, or eye. Eye. Spine. Oh, I have no idea. Uterus uh, where is uterus. where the baby grows inside of the stomach of a, a woman. Uh, spine oh. is the um, there. It's like the bones in your back, your spine. Mm -hmm. Finger. Um, these are on your hand. You have fingers, of course, and then your eye. You used to see. Mm -hmm. So which one do you think it is? Uh, maybe it's eye. You think it's eye? Okay, let's ask the other students. What do you guys think? Do you guys know? I think the, the meaning is spine or finger. Spine. Okay, well, let's try spine. And I think that one is correct. So that one would yes. really um, affect whether she could walk or not. Because it, even if your finger is injured, you could still walk, even if you have, like, a broken finger. <laughs> but if your spine is, is broken, then it's very, very difficult to move. Yeah. All right, nice job, guys. I know that was a difficult one, but good job, Nan, too. Okay, Hogan, would you like to try number nine? Okay, number nine. The blank on his knee was scraped off when he hit the road. Uh, what's the options? Okay, we have collarbone, limbs, teeth, or skin. I think it's a uh, skin. Okay, I agree. Let's see if it's right, and that is correct. Awesome job, very good, nice work. Thank and you. Hogan, um, where are you from? I didn't get to ask you. Yeah, I'm from originally from Korea, and I'm currently living in Los Angeles, California. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, we have another student too that he's living in Texas right now, but he's from another country too. That's oh, cool. okay. Yeah, nice to meet you, Hogan. Nice to meet you. All right, Ksenia, I'm going to ask you to try number 10. Your grandfather will be able to work better after his surgery. Okay, so we have the option of chin, <laughs> waist, hip, or arm. Hip. Hip surgery, okay. And that's correct. Very good. So the hip is... Um, the bone that connects your legs to your back. Yeah, very good. Great job. Um, okay, so we have a pretty good understanding, I think, of these of the human body uh, vocabulary, of the anatomy vocabulary. So um, we can talk now a little bit about medical supplies and tools. And um, these are some vocabulary words that you would use or you would hear if you work in a medical field, like if you work as a nurse or um, a medical assistant, or if um, you happen to be going to the doctor, these are some things that you will see or that you will hear. 
making these words. Um, so, Bakri, I think I'm going to ask you to read the first two vocabulary words for us. <clears throat> Antiseptic uh, liquid used <clears throat> to sterilize in, in between two brackets, clean the surface of the skin. Bandage, a cloth covering that is placed over a wound to prevent bleeding, swelling, and infection. Very good, nice. And Jose, can you read the next two for us? Okay, bandage, a cloth covering that okay. is placed. Sorry, this one here. Ah, bandage, scissors, tool used to cut bandage. Okay, and the next one too, yeah. Okay, blood, blood pressure monitor, a tool that measures the force of blood flow through a person's body. Very good, nice. And um, this uh, word is really pronounced with the schwa sound, so it, it sounds like uh, uh, <laughs> like the blood. schwa sound. So yeah, it sounds like blood, blood. Blood, blood. Very good. Blood, <laughs> blood pressure. Great job. Okay, and Aka, I think it's your turn. Can you try the next two? Okay, dressing. A protective covering that is placed over a wound. Elastic tape. A thin roll of uh, stretchy material that is sticky on one side. All right. So have you guys seen this before? Like um, someone dressing a wound and using maybe elastic tape to secure it on? Elastic tape uh, seems like band-aid or something. Band-aid. Um, it's a little bit different. It comes, I'll show you maybe here. I'll put dressing a wound. And um, you can see, okay, so this is the white part is called the dressing, okay? And then um, I'll see if they have a picture of the tape. It's, okay, so this is the tape that's used usually. And sometimes it comes in different colors, but um, it's, it's like fabric. It's woven, but on one side it's... Um, like adhesive, it's a little bit sticky, so it can keep the um, the gauze. Gauze is another word for this, the dressing on the wound. And I'll write that word here, gauze. Okay, and I'll give you guys the link also to this vocabulary list, so you can see it. All right, so we have. Um, the dressing and the elastic tape. So we have like an, a good idea. We saw pictures of those. <laughs> okay, and um, maybe Nan, I could ask you to read the next two vocabulary words for us. Okay, I I chart a poster of letter, word, and number combinations of various size used to test a person's eyesight. Mm -hmm. Oh, forceps. Instrument used during operations and medical procedures assist the doctor in pulling, holding, and retrieving. All right, very good. And forceps are sometimes used when a baby is being born to help the baby to um, uh, to come out. Sometimes they use forceps. And um, they kind of like grab on to the baby's head and they pull the the baby out. Uh, so, so you can kind of picture how forceps are used sometimes. All right, and we talked a little bit about gauze. Um, we saw that picture. It's the same thing as dressing. It's that white material. Um, so we can read the next two. Maybe Hogan, I can ask you to read these two for us. Okay. Hy hypodermic needle. Sharp pointed metal piece that pricks the skin attached to a syringe used for taking blood or administering medicine. IV bag, the porch that contains the requis to be punched, pumped into a uh, patient's body. Okay, yeah, very good, perfect. Um, so usually you'll see an IV bag hanging um, beside a patient. Um, and then they have the IV, which is like the, the plastic tube, 
that um, usually goes into their arm. So the medicine goes directly into their bloodstream. Do you know what does it mean, IV? What stands for? Um, intravenous. It means, uh, it's like a medical term for um, inside of the vein. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, nice question. Yeah. Okay, um, and Ksenia, can I ask you to read the next two? Medicine cup, small plastic measuring cup, microscope, equipment that makes small things appear larger than they are. Okay, very nice, good job. And Bakri, can I ask you to read the next two? Uh, which, which one? Uh, autoscope or not? Uh huh, yeah, starting with autoscope. Autoscope, a device used for looking into a patient's ears. Mm -hmm. Oxygen mask, uh, equipment used. Okay. Used uh, equipment that, uh, yeah, that fits over the nose and mouth and supplies oxygen. Okay, very nice, good job. Um, so, I think everyone has seen these oxygen masks before. The otoscope, has everyone seen these before? When the doctor inspects your ear, usually they use one of these. Yes. Okay, so I think everyone has a, a nice idea what it is. Okay, um, Jose, can I ask you to read the next two? Okay, privacy screen, an object that is used to separate the doctor and patient from others in an open room. Mm -hmm. Scales, a device that measures a person's weight. All right, very nice, good job. And um, Aka, I think it's back to you. Can you read the next two for us? The stethoscope, uh, stethoscope, equipment yeah, for this. Equipment for listening to a person's heart and lungs. Uh, syringe, syringe, syringe. I'm not sure. A cylinder-shaped piece that attaches to a needle and can be filled with liquid. All right, good job. Syringe, yeah. So, have you seen a, a stethoscope before? Oh, yes, a lot. Maybe every doctor, you know, uses. Yeah, it's, it's the one that you use to listen to the heartbeat. Very good. Um, and then the syringe, of course, is used when you're getting a vaccination or something. It's the plastic part that is attached to the needle, the hypodermic needle that we read about before. Um, okay, Nan, can I ask you to read the next two words for us? Okay, table and head rest paper. Paper that is placed on an examining table or head rest to prevent the spread of germs. Good. Test two. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Glass uh, cylinder that is filled with blood or other liquids and can be kept and placed in a storage area. Excellent. Very nice. Good job. And Hogan, can I ask you to read the last two for us? Sure. Uh, thermometer. An instrument used to check a person's body temperature. Vial, a small bottle of a container used for storing liquids. Nice, very, very good. Okay, so we have a little matching exercise that we can try at the bottom of the page. And um, for you guys already have the, the link, so you have the answers too, but we can try anyway. <laughs> um, maybe Ksenia, you can tell us um, number one. Which one do you think matches number one? I can't catch my breath. It's oxygen mask. Yeah, very good. And um, maybe, Bakri, could you try number two? Prepare the examining table for the next patient. Mm -hmm. So what, what supply would you use there? Uh, maybe label and headdress paper. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> Um, and Jose, can you try number three? Yes, we'll have to get a blood sample. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. What do they use uh, when they take yeah. your blood? Well, take your blood and... Uh, a syringe, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually a One syringe. syringe. And then, like, what's on the end of the syringe? Uh, a a chart? No. Um, not no. the eye chart, but um, what's usually attached to the syringe? Uh, hypodermic needle? No. Yeah, yes. the needle. Yes, <laughs> needle. Yeah, very good. So I'll show you a picture, so just so we have a good understanding of what these are. Um, so you see, like, this is an, an example. So this part, the plastic part, is the syringe, but the part right. that goes here yeah. on the end. This is the hypodermic needle. Okay. And um, yeah, you can see like a better picture here. And so they have different sizes that are used for different medications depending on the thickness and um, whether and it has to go. Hypo- hypodermic needle usually used for uh, the subcutaneous injections like insulin, insulin, the large needle for drawing blood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that clarification too. Yeah, good job. Okay, so Aka, I'm going to ask you to try number four. Okay, uh, I need to uh, sterilize the wound. Mm, Sterilize the wound. Maybe table and head rest paper? Um, Well, no, No. like the, the, um, that's Mm -hmm. usually like, it's like, um, like white paper that usually you sit on. Um, okay. But when you uh, sterilize the wounds, like if someone has a, an, um, an open wound, like a cut. Ah, uh, okay. Bandage scissors. Scissors. Um, well, do you. No, because you want to sterilize it, so it means like you want to clean it and get rid clean of it. all of the bacteria. Mm-hmm. You want to kill all of the germs. Uh, okay. Uh, Anti antiseptic. Uh, antiseptic. Do you remember what that means, antiseptic? And maybe to sterilize liquid or something sterilized. Yeah, 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 yeah. It says liquid used to sterilize, clean yeah. the surface of the skin. Okay. Very good. Maybe yeah. I didn't join this class. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, very good. So you use antiseptic, and sometimes it's alcohol based, and so that really kills all the bacteria and the viruses. Good job. Okay, uh, Nan, can you try number five? Okay, we will have to fit him with a liquid. Uh, it's IV back. Okay, yeah, very good, the IV bag. And Hogan, can you try number six? Number six, let's find out your weight. It should be scarce. Yeah, you weigh yourself on the scale. Good job. And Ksenia, can you try number seven? I need to examine the patient in private, privacy screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. And Bakri, can you try number eight? Uh, let's check your vision uh, eye chart. Mm-hmm. Very good, nice. And Jose, can you try number nine? Okay, let's see if you are uh, running a uh, fever. Uh, letter B, thermometer. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And then the last one, uh, Aka, can you try number 10? Okay, uh, can you cut this gate for me? Bandage scissors. Yeah, very good. And this one is pronounced like gauze. 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 Gauze, yeah. It's that white. Um, ooh, ooh. The white material that's a little bit stretchy, it's used for bandaging a wound or dressing a wound. Oh, okay. Excellent job, guys. I know this was really um, a lot of advanced vocabulary, but you all did really well. Great work. Um, okay, so we have also some more <laughs> vocabulary for medical specialists. And so um, you have like a lot of different kinds of specialized doctors, depending on... Um, your health problem. And so we can go through these really quickly. Um, and then we're going to pretend that we are doctors and we're going to give each other 
diagnosis. <laughs> so, um, so let's look at these specific kinds of doctors first. And um, maybe I can ask Colgan. Colgan, would you like to read maybe the first three here? Okay. Um, allergist specializes in determining food and environmental allergies. Anesthesiologist, it's very difficult to pronounce. Anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist mm -hmm. specializes in pain prevention during surgery. Cardiologist, heart specialist. Very good, nice. And Nan, can I ask you to try the next three for us? Okay. Uh, Chiral uh, practice. Chiral. Back special. Sorry. Character, uh, chiropractor. Chiropractor. Yeah, very good. Perfect. Oh, chiropractor, back specialist, dentist, tooth uh, specialist, dermatologist, uh, skin specialist. Excellent job. Very good. I know these are really hard to pronounce, but you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> All right. Aka, can I ask you to pronounce the next three? Or to read the yes. next three? A fertility specialist helps people who have difficulty getting pregnant. G a gyne gynecologist. Gynecologist. Gynecologist specializes in women's needs. A massage therapist spe specializes in muscle relaxation. Very good, excellent. And um, Jose, can I ask you to read the next three? Mid midwife helps. Women deliver babies in a natural way. Naturopath specialize, specializes in natural cures and remedies. Neurologist, brain specialist. Excellent, nice work. All right, and Bakri, can I have you read the next three for us? Uh, start from <coughs> occupational. Obstetrician, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Obstetrician. Specialized for pregnant women, occupational therapist specialized in workplace health, and oncologist, tumor specialist, including cancer. All right, very good. And Ksenia, can I ask you to read the next, maybe the next four? <laughs> okay, ophthalmologist specialized in eye diseases, pediatrician specialist. Specialist for babies and children, physical therapist, specializes in embodied movement, Pe pedi pediatrist, food, sp podiatrist, food specialist. Yeah, it's like podiatrist, yeah. Podiatrist. Good, mm -hmm. good job. <laughs> okay, and Hogan, can I ask you to read the last two for us? Okay, Psychi psychiatrist, special specialist in mental health, radiologist, specializes in imaging tests. All right, great job, very good. And I'm going to give you also the link to this list here of, um, of medical specialists, the, the vocabulary there. All right, so uh, let's practice now giving a diagnosis. And so when you are at the doctor, if your doctor speaks English, um, you'll be getting a diagnosis from them and um, you'll need to understand it. So these are some phrases that you might hear and um, some phrases that you as a patient also might be able to use. And, and we can like read a dialogue to see how um, how a conversation might go like in a natural way <laughs> in an English setting. So um, maybe I can ask Bakri. Bakri, would you like to read maybe the first half of these phrases? Maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. here? Okay. Okay. Uh, physician. So um, your test results have come in. I'm afraid the prognosis is not good. You have a long road to recover. We have several options to discuss. The blood test come back negative. Uh, the, the transfusion was uh, successful. Was a success, oh. yeah. Very was a success. Uh, it All looks right. Okay. Good. And I'm going to ask Kasani to read the second half here of these phrases. It looks like you're ready to go home. 
I'd like to keep your hair overnight. We'll know more in a few days. You are not in the clear yet. We've ruled our diabetes. I'm hoping to get to the bottom of this soon. Okay, does anyone have any questions before we go on about the meaning of any of these phrases? Or any of the words? I have a question on the second one. Uh -huh. Prognosis. Prognosis. All right, that's a great question. Let's read the definition, actually, for this one, because I had a feeling it might be a new word for a lot of our, our um, students. Can you read this here for us? Okay, pro prognosis. prognosis is a medical term for predicting the likely outcome of one's current understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it's like they're saying, okay, this is um, what you're going to be experiencing in the near future. So if, you, if they say you have a good prognosis, then that means that you'll, you'll be improving and you'll be fine soon. But if they say the prognosis isn't good, then that's bad news <laughs> for everyone, yeah. Uh, did you have other questions about the vocabulary? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of these patient phrases, some things that the patients might say in response to some of these, um, the doctor's phrases. And um, maybe I can ask Kose. Patient. Kose, can I ask you to read? You can go ahead and read all of these. Again. Okay, I don't understand what this means. Am I going to need surgery? Is it, is it good news or bad? When will the test result come in? How long do I have to stay in the hospital? What is the success rate? Are they going to run more tests? Is this a common problem for people my age? I'd like to discuss other options. I'm going to get a second opinion. So, Jose, do you know what that means? I'm going to get a second opinion? Yes. When you you, you are going to get, to get other appointment with other doctor in order to, to, to have uh, other, uh, different, uh, another different opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, perfect. Very good. So, that's um, important. Uh, that's a really nice phrase to know um, because sometimes it's it's best to get a second opinion, especially when it's um, a really serious condition. Um, okay, so if we can read through the dialogue. Maybe we can ask Aka and Nan. Can I ask you guys to read okay. for us? All right, so Aka, you are the doctor. Nan, you are the patient. You are Jessica. So Aka, you can go ahead and start. Hey, hi, Jessica. How are you feeling today? A bit better. That's good to hear. Are you still feeling nauseous? No, I haven't felt sick to my st stomach since you switched my medication. Great. So your test result come in this morning. It's about time. Is it good news or bad? I guess it's a bit, bit of both. Which do you want first? Let's get the bad news over with. Okay. Uh, it looks like you're going to need surgery to remove the tumor from your leg. After the operation, you are going to have to stay off your feet for at least three weeks. That means no scissor, a uh, uh, sucker. I, I was afraid uh, you were going to say it. Say that. Now for the good news. The biopsy shows that the tumor is benign, which means it's not cancerous. Uh, we are going to take it away just to be on the safe side. Wow, that's a road of my mind. Thanks, doctor. Don't get too excited. We still need to get to the bottom of all of this weight loss. I've probably just been so worried about this stupid lab. These things often are stress-related, but we are still going to do a few blood tests just to allure a few things out. Things like what? Cancer? Actually, I'm thinking more along the line, lines of 
food reality. All right, excellent job, guys. Great reading. Very, very good. So now I'd like um, you guys to team up. And Bakri, are you here still? I saw we had another student join named Bakri. Yes. No. Is it, are both uh, the, of those your account? I, I believe so, yeah. It's, it's, oh, uh, did you log in twice? Yeah, maybe I, I logged twice. Yeah, it seems like. Oh, okay. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> Okay, so, um, oh, and I think we lost, okay, yeah, we lost Aka. He said he has to go. No problem. Okay, so, um, maybe I can ask Ksenia and Bakri to work together, okay? So, you guys can, um, kind of, like, pretend that you are, um, you're, like, a doctor and a patient together, okay? So, um, Ksenia, would you like to be the doctor? Yes. Okay, and Bakri, you can be the patient. And, okay. um, and you guys don't have to read it. Uh, you, can, you can look at this for um, maybe suggestions, but, um, but you don't have to read this. You can just kind of make up um, the words as you go along. You can just pretend that you're a real doctor. <laughs> so, Ksenia, you can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. And who's my partner? Bakri. Okay. Um, hello, Bakri. How are you feeling today? Uh, really bad. It's getting worse, I think. Like. It's again about your head. You have a terrible headache. Yeah, and I have a new thing. Like right now, I'm start coughing up some like really dark spirit. Okay, I see. Because your test results came yesterday, and actually, also I have two news: bad and good one. Well, which one do you want to start? <laughs> Let's start with the bad news. Maybe with one. <laughs> okay, we start with a good one. Um. It's just um, you have a simple disease, so we should uh, do your small surgery, maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. It was uh, no, uh, I forgot this word, Michelle. It's when you fall asleep while surgery. I'm oh, anesthesia? Yes, we got uh, anesthesia. We'll do an anesthesia to you only half body, so you will be awake all the surgery. Oh well, uh, so it seems like it's getting really warm. So when suppose I have our, I'm going to the surgery. <coughs> I'm sorry. When I'm supposed going to the surgery, or when do I go? Ah, just in our hospital, so it uh, will be very easy surgery. You are, uh, sh you shouldn't be afraid of it. And when are you uh, planning to go to surgery? I'm sorry. When are you planning to do the surgery? I think in a few days. What do you think about it? And should I stay here in the hospital or? Wait? No, you can go home and uh, return in a few days. We should make an appointment. And but I have a bad one. Use do you remember about bad one? Oh, okay. So let's get let's get to the bad ones. Uh, yes, you should pay for it about ten thousand dollars because your uh, cover plan uh, can't cover it actually. Oh my God! Really? <laughs> yes, That's right. too much. And I already, I mean, I believe my insurance should cover all the expenses related to this surgery. No, we contacted with your insurance company and they denied it. And actually, you have to stay two days in our hospital after the surgery and one day will be cost 5000 So in the So in the total, it will be 20000 and what's the prognosis after the surgery? Is it the same still, or do you think it's hundred percent chance of? I mean, you will better? be 
another man you will be I think 20 years younger so it's good for you is there any complication been no uh, no not at all it's very easy and how like uh, how long does it did it take usually like for such a surgery I'm sorry what how takes? long you, how long usually does it take what take uh, time like the surgery. I said I said you it about 15 or 20 minutes only and why should so? you give me two or three days more? I mean, I believe because the expenses will be too much. Can I uh, discharge no. on the same day? No, you should, I don't know, maybe tell it to your family. You should uh, take your clothes. Maybe because you should. I, I have my daughters in, so, and I have to take care of So I have a lot of commitment, so I can stay for more than one day. I it's okay. We have another room for your daughter. She she can stay, but it's uh, plus money, another money, for her. But it's okay. You're welcome. You and your daughter in our hospital. Okay, so <laughs> guys, very good. Absolutely. Kistanya had an answer for everything. <laughs> I I try to like to like out the different like yeah, I mean more details about the surgery and the cost. Yeah. I know it's all really expensive. Kisanya is a hard, a hard doctor. <laughs> yeah, your answer is very sharp. Like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Very good, guys. Okay, so next, Jose and Nan are going to practice together. Jose, you are going to be the doctor this time. Okay. Nan, you are going to be the patient. All okay. Right. So go ahead, Jose. You can start whenever you're ready. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you feeling uh, today? I feel wa water and water. Why? I have no what, idea. What is the feel. problem about? Uh, I feel uh, a little uh, bit uh, nauseous and got a headache uh, suddenly in the last night. Yes. Your uh, test results came in uh, this m morning in, in, in few time. I'll try to check it. Uh, I'll try to give you a di diagno diagnosis about uh, what is your uh, problem about. Okay. I'm waiting for your diagnosis. Please help me. Yes. Yes, sure. I'll try to help you all the, the time. Um, so, uh, tell me, tell me. Okay, so what should I do now? Just uh, waiting for your diagnosis. Uh, I think uh, it's not uh, so so bad the problem that you have. Uh, I think in, uh, I I'll try to check this diagnosis uh, as soon as possible, but. Um, in the first results uh, shows a, a bad news and a good news. The bad news is that uh, you have a, a, li a little tumor into your stomach, but it's a little tumor. It's not so uh, important. I think uh, it will be necessary to make a small surgery. It takes uh, 15 minutes, more or less, no more. Oh, thank you, doctor. But I can't understand why I have to make a small surgery. I only got a headache and a little bit of nausea. What's the problem in my body? The problem is the the small tumor that you have uh, into the stomach produce uh, some headache. I think it's a it's it's, a, it's not normal. This kind it's normal that. Um, it's normal that you have a little headache when you have a small tumor into the stomach. Oh, I say a small tumor in, yes. in my stomach. Okay. I'm re relying on you. Please help me. <laughs> yes. I don't have any problem. If you want, you, you could uh, check it with, uh, another, uh, with uh, another doctor. I don't have uh, any problem. After you check the ID, you come back and I'll try to make the surgery as soon as possible. 
Okay. Uh, by the way, may I ask? Uh, have already paid for the life insurance. Uh, in okay, uh, I'm going to have you guys pause okay. just for, for a second because we almost oh, ran out of time. But um, let me just really quickly have Hogan also with Nan. Hogan, can you yes. be the patient? And Nan, you can ask. Uh, you can ask how he's doing and give him a diagnosis. Okay. Uh, who's my patient? Oh well, Nan is is your doctor. You're the oh, okay. Nan is my doctor. Okay. okay. I'm okay. Nan, can you ask how he's doing and give him a diagnosis? Okay, how 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 do you feel recently? Okay. Um, today I feel very bad, and I got a stomach ache, and also I have a headache. I don't know what's going to happen in my body. Okay, I don't know. No worries of it. Uh, let me give you a diagnosis. Uh, okay, first, uh, please uh, take my p uh, take this uh, prescription prescription to a pharmacy mm -hmm. and uh, please uh, take the medication that's on the prescription, okay? Okay, how long do I have to uh, take, like a couple of days is enough or one week? Uh, you just take uh, all the medication um, for one week and you can go to recovery, no problem. Okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, guys. You're welcome. Very good. That was a really fast doctor's visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but great job. Very nice. Okay. And um, I really appreciate everyone's participation. You all did really well using the vocabulary that we were able to to learn. We talked a little bit about those second opinions, getting a second opinion, and um, and the diagnosis, the prognosis. So you guys did really, really well. Great job. And I think you're all prepared to go to the doctor now. <laughs> but Thank uh, yeah, thanks guys for your participation. Hopefully, I'll get to see you soon in another class. Okay. Okay. okay thank bye. you very much. Bye bye. bye thank guys. you very much. See you again soon. Bye.